Hey everybody, I hope you're doing great. I am doing a 15 minute session for a client. We're supporting this client today with really brightening up the energy fields. Are there negative entities in there? How can we clear the chakras? What guidance from the higher self can we receive, right? So I'm gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, energy healing to support this client with these goals. I'm gonna read the goals here in just a moment. I simply wanna thank you, the client, so much. I'm really excited to see what we come across and what our experience is today. Thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. There's going to be other people that are gonna be curious about the same things in their own energy field, and there's something we can truly learn from each other. So this is gonna be really supportive for other people as well as for you too. And for me, you know, <laughs> we're all in this thing together. Okay, so let me read your goals and we're gonna get started. You say, okay, just a second. Okay, I want to clear any negative entities, clear my chakras, brighten my aura, receive any guidance from my higher self that will help me most right now in my life. Okay, so you've got kind of like the whole kit and caboodle concept. Like I just want to feel all around butter in my energy field and learn something really cool from my higher self today. Okay, and I mean, so negative entities, I mean... That's like that that right there we can we could really dive down the rabbit hole of that one because we all have our own inner demons like our own things that we need to work on our insecurities and so anything that's like a, a kind of a shadow in our personality and how we want to approach life or re resist life right so there's going to be something of the darker side involved in that and so that could take some real like diving into the rabbit hole to really take a look at all the nuances of the negative entity concept um, so I'm feeling like really bright in your whole energy field is going to, to clear out the insecurities. It's going to give you a better boost of confidence, a better boost of joy, a better boost of just feeling all around um, secure, okay? Because it's just a good vibe. It's just good vibes, you know? And then when we, when we feel like safe and secure, we like wholeheartedly trust in those good vibes, we become powerful people. Okay, and it's not just like a thought, like we got to visualize ourselves becoming that awesome, like confident person, like I trust in the divine, like I trust in my life, I trust in the good vibe. It's like, no, I am the being of that energy, you know what I mean? Okay, I feel like I'm ready. I feel like I'm ready for this. It's really getting in the zone here with what you're wanting to achieve. <sighs> okay. Shall we get started? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> just sending this information out to the universe here. And I'm kind of kind of like moving my own energy so I'm in the zone with how we're going to learn more about your energy. <sighs> Negative entities was first on the list. There's something about that. Brightening your energy field. Okay. I'm going to just ask your higher self to guide this whole experience. What does your higher self want to reveal and how can we really improve the overall light and balance of your energy field and your chakras, all that good stuff. Okay. So your higher self presents this image first. And it's basically like a zipper and it's bulging and it's stuck, okay? So we're trying to unzip this zipper, but it's stuck. It's almost like stuck on purpose. Like there's something that you need to kind of open your eyes to see that something is stuck. And it's this one isn't easy actually to reconcile this. If I pull the zipper down, it's going to feel like it's ripping your skin. Um, it's a, it's right away your higher self is showing me something that is a, a vulnerability for you. That might be the negative entity's path. It might be actually number one is on your list. It might be the best path for us to take. This is a painful thing. I mean, ask your higher self, should I just like straight up, should we just like rip the band-aid off? Like, should we just straight up like rip, like pull the zipper down? I mean, it's going to be painful. I'm just going to ask your higher self, what, how do we handle this? I mean, do we have to baby this one? Do you need to work on some things behind the scenes before we work on unzipping this, which is letting go. It's, you're not stuck, you're free, but 
it seems like an overall concept that you're psychologically developing and building into, okay? Your higher self asked me, what is the zipper made out of? Okay, so let me just touch it and feel it out for a moment. has to do with your sacral chakra and I thought maybe it was your heart I thought maybe it was your third eye like maybe there's something that is hard for you to look at and the zipper stuck there and we just prefer it to just find the zipper stuck I don't even know anything about a zipper you know like how far can we go in just putting it there and then pretending that we didn't do that <laughs> you know I don't know what it is but it, it says sacral chakra And I tell your higher self that I, I, I'm feeling this out and for me to understand what the zipper is made out of, I'm going to create a safe space where this isn't going to totally change your world yet. We're going to uh, baby step our way into understanding what this is. Um, I just move the zipper into the safe space and then I'm actually going to unzip it gently. And we're going to see what's on the other side of it, okay? Because it's something that's really puffed out in your sacral chakra. It's actually bloated. It's so bloated, like the pants are so tight, like the I can't even unzip it. The zipper's stuck, like, and it's going to rip. It's just rip body parts, okay? So our sacred body parts are on the other side of that zipper, and it's gonna rip. So there's a definite. Um, this is this is about something painful, okay? There's people in this uh, safe room. When I start to pull the zipper down, there's um, it's a hairy situation. <laughs> it's like just full of ha a hairy situation. It's just full of hair everywhere. And there's people that are in a kind of a doctor's um, uh, waiting room. And they're just quietly sitting, looking at magazines. And there may be like 20 people in here. You don't know how to be one of these people. Something is majorly off. I'm convinced it is related to the heart and the third eye, as well as the sacral chakra. But it's very loud and bulgy about the sacral chakra. You long to be in the hairy situation in this room for some reason. And so, this remember, this is a safe space where we can make sense of this and, and then we're going to introduce it to more of the physical, most present day you and see how you feel about it. Because there's something that is really sensitive for you to look at this all by yourself. You need a little bit of support, okay? So I take my cosmic hand and I just put you in the safe room, okay? Or in the safe room, which is also a doctor's office, which is full of like, it's almost like water. But it's water that is like really long hair. It's like everywhere. Hair is everywhere. Just like flowing hair is everywhere. It's a dark brown color. You're really nervous, but you need now you have a doctor's appointment and uh, you're present here in the scene. And something is really harming your, um, I want to define it as your sexuality, okay? Is something is ripped there, something is in pain there. You are already going in to speak to a doctor about it. And this uh, whole doctor's office space starts to turn into a heart and it's heart having a hard time breathing and getting the air that it needs. So there's a bit of anxiety about this. So um, that's what's happening next is it's, it's like this whole scene is turning into a heart, a heartbeat, and it's having a hard time breathing. It's having a hard time getting the oxygen in. So it's a bit um, kind of like an anxiety feeling. But you're not really listening 
I, I don't know if because there's a conversation between you and the doctor in this scene. And the doctor is giving you the analysis, is giving you the interpretation, giving you the details, but you're not able to really hear the doctor because the sound of the anxiety is louder than the doctor's um, conversation. You kind of paralyzed in your mind as well because you're not able to clear your mind. You're not able to think clearly. I say, was it worth it to go to the doctor? Did that solve the problem? I don't, I, you've got to be present here when you're receiving some um, solid advice. It's hard, I'm seeing you as struggling to receive solid advice about this. And I, I can tell the reason why you're having a hard time receiving solid advice is, is because the sound of your heart is so loud and the sound of the anxiety and it, it causes the mind to, to, it's almost like a merry-go-round that doesn't stop spinning, but it doesn't make you dizzy. It just makes a lot of noise and it, it makes it hard for you to really have the clarity that, like solid clarity, that it's like, you know what, I could take ownership of this, I can do step one, two, three, I want to do this, I'm passionate about it. Something about your fears are holding you back from um, being able to be something of a next level triumphant in who you are in your life, okay? Something is, uh, another scene is showing up here, and wow, I, I'm impressed, like, so when I read the goals, I was, you know, I guess sometimes you read goals like that, and it, it's so sweet, and it's lighthearted, and it's really focusing, wanting to feel bright from the inside out, um, just wanting to clear out anything that might be causing you to um, avoid feeling that brightness, and the first thing your higher self is guiding me into is this vulnerable stuff, okay? Like super crazy vulnerable stuff. Like this is the depth stuff. This is the deep side of the genuine person that you are and what you're struggling with in your life, okay? That's what I'm running into here. So, so I mean, i just applauding you for being a human being who's struggling with stuff, you know? <laughs> Sometimes we have to go through the real life nitty gritty and then as we take those steps, we discover we were bright all along because we give in to more of that strength of character that we actually have that we kind of shield ourselves from for whatever reasons, right? So, yeah, so I, your higher self was presenting another scene and the scene was, uh, again, it's, it's, so when we're talking about the sac sacral chakra, yeah, it does represent sacred sexuality, intimacy, yes. Also represents um, the pleasures of life. So um, I love myself. Like I, I blissfully, I, I'm confident, not egotistically, okay? But I, I really am so glad to be exactly who I am, just the way that I am. And I'm, I, I just want to be happy in this life. And no matter what happens, I am proud to be who I am. Like, I am a sacred, awesome individual. I'm a special person. Like, I'm, an, I'm a unique person, but I'm solid in my personality. You know? So sacral chakra is a pretty interesting place. It also has a lot of, like, inner child stuff going on in there. So if there's some inner child trauma, that, that could be in there also. So like let's say teenage trauma <laughs> um, relationship trauma um, that stuff goes in there also can go in the heart it can go in the emotional gut I mean it could go in other chakras too but um, when you heal that sacral chakra I swear it, it brings in good luck it brings in um, positive uh, manifesting like good things in your life because it's about the pleasures of life so you're attracting more of that um, positive energy so this scene is about intimacy okay so your higher self shows me a scene and it's about intimacy. And you're basically stuck in a door that is locked shut. And you're basically like representing an ice cube. But you detach from yourself. You actually project your consciousness outside of yourself to try to interpret yourself in this intimate situation. And... You don't know how to get out of this door that's actually closed and locked and, and you aren't an ice cube, right? But that is something that uh, I'm witnessing here and you're trying to understand it. I say, well, what does intimacy mean to you? And that gets, 
uh, really stiff, okay? Like, um, because you, you're going to have to be vulnerable with someone who is going to see you truly, like, not just naked, <laughs> but literally, genuinely see the, the depth of who you are in a way where they, they deeply love you. They deeply love you for just not just the physical nudity, but the, the emotional nudity, the, the mental nudity, the sexual nudity, right? And so it's, it's a vulnerable expression, but it also isn't when you, you trust the person that you're with, when, when you're deeply um, tuned into who they are and you feel safe with each other, you know? It's like um, sometimes it takes time to learn how to have that and to be in that way. Yeah, you close up and kind of shut down because something is really tiring about this. I ask you, do you, do you want this or do you not want this? Maybe this isn't a, the right fit for intimacy for you. Maybe there's a do another fit. I, I really, I'm trying to understand what your comfort zone is with this image. And yeah, we're, we're talking about an, an image of intimacy, okay? Let's see what your higher self has to say about this. Your higher self tells you to stop. Um, okay, how would I put this? It's like you're making conveniences. Um, you're making um, conveniences to be uh, in a place of avoidance, but then to identify yourself as having a problem isn't true. It's a safety net. It's, uh, it's more comfortable to say you have a problem than to say you don't have a problem. Because if you say you don't have a problem, now you're exposed to the nudity of the nakedness. And so the insecurity, where is it really lie for you? Um, might be an emotional or, or heart-centered expression. It might be, um, it's, it's truly um, exposing yourself in all your, um, I mean, it's the sensitivities and all that, you know? Your higher self straight up says, you do not have any problems. Your higher self straight up says that and that you need to adopt that you do not have any problems. It's, it's easier to just lean on that like a crutch than to let go of the crutch and realize it's, it's like I see a, wor a, a bird that keeps insisting that its wing is broken and that's why it can't fly. But the wing isn't broken. You're just shy or something. <laughs> like, stop saying your wing is broken. Like, you can fly and you're amazing at flying. So fly already and go live your bird life. Your higher self is saying this, okay? This is a big deal. This is like a big step, okay? Hmm. Just a second. <laughs> this is a... When, you, when you, you do actually try this, you are saying, okay, I don't have a problem. But what ends up happening is there's a circulation that really hits your... Uh, your third eye space, which you know what's in there. There's ego in there and ego would prefer we just be the bird that says my wing's broken because it might be safer. It might be emotionally safer, physically safer, might be safer in 10,000 ways that the ego would create in order to keep you on the ground instead of in the air, you know? And so the ego is a, a convenient liar and it's very good at it. It's very, uh, very convincing, you know? It's so ridiculously convincing sometimes. We don't even know that we're lying to ourselves. you know? It's a, it's a real safety net, that one. So when you start to say, okay, I don't have a problem and I am, I am completely okay being in this intimacy scenario, exposed, open, it, it sends a signal here and I, I hear it, I feel it like, um, it, like uh, I don't know, the heat is rising and then it goes, <laughs> in here and a uh, major shimmy shake uh no <laughs> i didn't approve this ego's like no i didn't approve this no um stamp of deny <laughs> denied okay so which part of you is denying yourself 
<laughs> and which part of you is saying this is what I want? <laughs> and so ego is insecure. Your soul and the spirit of who you are is not. Souls don't have brains. They're complete light. You know, so when you're complete light, you you you're you're just total love and you know that. In this body though, it's trying to work through the complexities of being human. So that's the prescription, all right? Maybe we're coming back to the doctor concept and maybe that's somehow the voice of your higher self is giving you the prescription of how to genuinely heal your sacral chakra, heal the negative entities concept, heal all the chakras, um, heal and bring more light to your energy field plus higher self guidance um, is to take a look at what we're talking about and give yourself permission, give yourself the ability to take ownership that there aren't any problems. And that's going to be a bit of like a stepping off the cliff side, expecting to fall and break into a million pieces, but there was no cliff side. It's just developing safety and security in yourself and belief in yourself, okay? Already just me talking about it and us looking at this stuff and bringing it to conscious awareness is already doing some major healing work. It's opening your chakras up already. It's giving you some work to do, which is a good thing. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for this. Not, I, it's like you never know what you're going to get, but I really value the, the vulnerabilities that I got to um, take a look at with you and, and work through. So thank you for being tough. It takes a bit of toughness and courage to, to look at these things. Now, thank you for sharing with us. And everybody watching, if you want me to take a look at anything you got going on there, I'd be happy to support you with any goals. And you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, have a great day, everybody.